Hello everybody, welcome to Project Nostal Slow. Today in this video, we're going to be testing what turbo is best for your diesel Mercedes. An HY35 or an HE351? Let's see what they do. <laughs> wastegate. A uh, very cheap Chinese wastegate. Uh, yeah. How much was it? 50 bucks. Uh, it was 50 bucks, but they were able to overnight it. Or it came the same day. No, next day. Amazon. No, same day. No, same day should be. Amazon. $50 Amazon wastegate set to 14 PSI spring, I think, which is actually not bad for uh, some cheap wastegate. 36 mil wastegate. Uh, this is what we're going to be testing. We're using the EGR block off hole. I kind of opened it back up and have. Oh, what is this? Did you take a little field trip today, Dennis? Yeah, purchased a really sweet turbo. Uh, this is a HE351. Off of 2003 Cummins. So these are supposed to be spool a lot faster than a HX35 and have a little bit more power than a HX35. So we'll see. I was really excited about the server. I was always wanted to try it. So let's see the difference between this one and our HY35. HY35. Which is like the old version, basically, whole set's attempt to make this turbo. Yeah. Which that's the field version of this turbo. Yeah. But but then there's a the, the HY thirty five is already uh, has a crutch. Oh yeah, where is it? Right here. No, because like okay, flashlight. Uh, that didn't happen to us. This is just how we got scammed. Oh wait, or this is how Daniel got scammed. Yeah, I bought this turbo and it came with a bunch of cracks. Didn't notice it actually. A bunch of cracks. That crack goes all the way through, and then also an, another crack on right there. And then on the inside, flip it over into here. On the inside, the crack continues going uh, right there. You can see it starts and then it continues forming up the wall. So what are you, what are you gonna try to attempt, Dennis? Weld it back up. Weld the we stuff out of it. We just it to last a couple of runs. We're gonna set the welder to uh, maximum and put on a slower speed and just let it, everything become lava. <laughs> and hope that it holds for like three runs. Yeah. Anyway, other than that, I'm actually quite interested to see the difference between that turbo and this turbo. This turbo looks pretty cool. Never had a turbo with like the- With an elbow from stock. Elbow from stock. Actually, this probably will fit perfectly onto the 124. What we need, this uh, it's already doing. Exactly. Okay, well, get to welding, Dennis. Yes, sir. The T valve thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know how many rotations. I just probably ten. <laughs> I just turned it up. I was thinking about going all the way until it's fully tight, but we'll see. That will be the next step. And right now, I'm gonna put a different uh, kick down solenoid just in case there was a problem with that one. And we'll oh. see. After that, the only thing that's left is pretty much to take the whole transmission apart because I took another one apart at home and. It's a lot to take apart, so I'll try to do everything before taking out the transmission. All right. Turbo exhaust side is on. Um, the wastegate placement is actually quite nice. You're just right here. And this actually wastegate will be good for like a lot of testing stuff, especially if we want to use this manifold for other 603s. It's like quick builds. This is like perfect setup. Out of the way, even if you get a slightly larger turbo, it should still be fine. And then it's got a take off the housing because it's clocked differently and then hook up the inner cooler and all the lines for the wastegate yeah. and build an exhaust you just, yeah because oh dude there's a hole <gasps> you gotta rtv it <laughs> got rtv it right there oh wow you somebody, can see that some, somebody cleaned it bad i wonder who it was making the wastegate pipe this basically just goes straight onto here 
and then it's just gonna be basically a screamer pipe dumping straight down. Uh, same with the exhaust, it's just gonna be going straight down. And then all I gotta do is weld this up, tighten it down, and the car is ready to uh, do its first test drive. Now that the turbo is mounted and the wastegate is set up, also with the, the boost controller is connected all the way through and the top one isn't necessary because that's just a extra system to keep the diaphragm from going up. Might have to set it up later, we'll see, but currently it's set up on just straight spring pressure. So the boost controller just acts like another tube, but then we can just turn it turn it down, tighten it so it would restrict the amount of flow that goes to the spring. Screw your pipe just going down, basically both the exhausts are just going straight down and it's ready for its second or third, fourth, first start and then drive. So let's start it up and take it for, take it for a run. What's the update now? Now we got the Turbo uh, fixed up. It seems like it actually spools faster than before. It spools faster than before, but uh, compared, compared to 257, yeah. it is still very slow. Um, still no fourth gear, so the only thing left now is to remove the transmission. Remove the transmission, yep. So I guess we'll get to our private testing grounds and then uh, do a full 0 to 60 rip. And see what, see what gains these sticker tires. Sticky oh. tires will let us do. Yeah, so now HY35 with the uh, sticky tires actually and and uh, weld it up with the uh, aftermarket waste gate. So, oh, yeah, and should, waste gate. yeah, so now it should spool a lot faster and we can not boost it up to 50 psi. Oh, intercooler cooler this time. Oh, inter inter cooler, yeah. Let's see what the spring. So a little bit. Uh, there's not much more left. It already started. It got, it got really tight. Ooh. Just a tiny bit more. <laughs> Quarter rotation, then let's test it one more time. Yeah, so just like, get, yeah, get, like 35 or yeah, something. Yeah, 30, 35, and then we're good to do our testing. So much more savage now. With the uh, HY35 welded up, uh, the crack welded up, and the external wastegate and the inner core much better. So I reconfigured the wastegate uh, boost controller system 
to hopefully get more boost out of it because 30 pounds is not that much for a whole set turbo on these 603s. It's basically like to the point where people, most people will do it, but 30 pounds is not good enough. Plus we're almost in the four second zero to 60. So I went ahead and just reconfigured the boost controller so I can hopefully get at least five more pounds out of it. Cause I think with those five pounds, it'll push us straight into the, the four second range. So let's see what this thing does now with the boost controller set up in a different way. did a quarter mile in 14.05 after letting off like a third of the way to quarter mile without fourth gear anyway but 4.59 that is amg territory that's pretty good that's pretty good so i'm interested to see if the he351 can do any better than that because technically should be more power i'm not going to touch the wastegate leave the wastegate exactly as it is not do anything with that and just same exact launch three psi and then just floor it all the way through so awesome run really impressed with the number it gave so we're good with the hy35 for now let's let's go back swap in the he351 so since this turbo is not going back onto a cummins i had to kind of twist apart and move the front housing and the rear housing oil feeder oil drain to fit correctly now that i did that the wastegate no longer lines up with the wastegate so just using a clamp to clamp the wastegate down shut uh hopefully should hold it and then this will just stay here as is then the wastegate system will just be our wastegate that we installed so so then it will be exactly how it was with the hy35 and this should be uh as close to the same situation as possible so let's go So the HE351 is a bit different with the exhaust uh, part of the turbo. So it's a four inch instead of a three inch, but I don't have a four inch V-band and I don't want the exhaust going straight back again because that was really bad. So this is what I'm doing. Exhaust downwards and grab welding gear. And then just tack it so it so it holds and blows the smoke down instead of into the engine bay again because that was really bad last time so oh it runs just as we expected so let's go take this thing out to our testing grounds and uh, see if this thing can do a faster 0 to 60. let's go Hopefully it spools quicker. I didn't even look at the quarter mile, uh, the zero to 60 time. Let's, let's, let's see that. I guess everything looks good underneath here, so. Oh, wow. 4.97. It, it loaded a lot better this time, uh, but still, for some reason, it's, it's slower. 
Interesting. I think something's wrong with the fueling. Um, but, I mean, so far HY35 did the best. Well, in conclusion, we've got this car from an 11.4 0 to 60 down to a 4.5 0 to 60, which is, that's, that's pretty crazy. The HY35 spools very quick also, but it also makes very high EGTs. I saw max was, I think, 1400 EGT, which is, that's, that's pretty hot. So, wouldn't recommend the HY35 if you're doing what we're doing, trying to push it to the max. But if you're just looking for a streetable, but still can do decent power turbo, HY35 is not bad. HE351, it's similar, but not the same. It spooled a little bit slower. So if I were to choose which turbo to go with in between these two, for myself, I think I would choose an HY35. There are a lot of other turbos you can use, Borg Warners, HX35, but other than that, this car went from extremely slow and turdish now to a car that can keep up with AMGs. Well, thank you guys for watching. God bless you guys. God bless America. You guys have a good night.